perfect. So today we're going to start reading comprehension. So I think for some of you, this will be a review. I'm going to be using those lesson decks that we've been doing in the in-person classes, but not the examples, but just to go over the method. And then like we've been doing for all the rest of the classes for this um, boot camp, we'll do some practice together. And then I'll let you guys do some practice on your own and we can review it. And then just to like, after this, um, after this session today, we're sort of we're at the halfway point of the boot camp. So just to um, you know, tomorrow we'll be looking at the claim data and conclusion kind of um reading questions. And then um on Friday, Thursday rather. Um, and then tomorrow we'll also be looking at synthesis questions. And then on Thursday, you'll all have a chance across the full session to do an entire practice SAT. So there'll be module one math and English in the morning sessions and module two um, uh, math and English in the afternoon ones. So for everyone who's just arriving now, just pop your um, full name in the chat for attendance. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. So this might look familiar to some, oops, sorry, to some of you, um, but we'll just keep, if you have any, I'm going to go quite quickly through this, but just like, if you have any questions, just pop your hand up with the raise hand function, because obviously your videos are often also, there's a lot of you, I can only see little thumbnails, um, or just, um, uh, you know, type a question in the mm -hmm. chat, but we'll just like discuss the it's methods really for... Oh, Taya, I think you're, I'll just mute you quickly. Um, sorry, just because there's background noise. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll just go through the methods and then we'll put this into practice. So the with the reading comprehension, we want to be thinking about the blind man and the elephant parable, which is essentially that loads of blind men who are obsessed with elephants get taken to me an elephant. And then, but they all think an elephant is a different thing because they're all touching a different bit of the elephant. So it's about like not getting distracted or hyper focusing on any like one element of um the text and instead um you, like making sure you're seeing the whole picture right that we're not just zooming in on little details but able to see the whole thing it's a lot easier than it used to be because the you know you never have to read more than 150 words on this whereas like you know passages used to be long for the reading in your SAT so yeah for whoever's just joining just pop your name in the chat all right great so like a lot of these pure reading comprehension questions um, will ask like, what's the main purpose of the text? That's like one of the main things that they ask. So, um, you know, we don't need to read this just now, but what, um, okay, yeah. So, is it on? oh yeah. So when we look for the main purpose, things that help us are like looking for transition words and looking for things that negate, like not overstate, or like, but accordingly, since. So as I said yesterday, when we did transitions, I told you they'd be really helpful for everything. And yet again, they are, you know, it's always good to think of transitions. Like if we didn't have transitions, it would be really hard to read any written text because we'd have no indications of what the link was. It would be like really disorientating, right? Like if you're not, it's like helping us see through, like through. So here we have things like, but we know something's gonna shift accordingly. We know it's a continuation, right? So this little guy, it's a trap often, like don't get um, distracted or lulled into a false sense of security by the fact that loads of answer choices will sh seem reasonable, right? Like that something might present or argue or explain or discuss, they all sound plausible at the beginning. So it's like really, really important to keep in mind that like just because something sounds possible or it's like the beginning of an answer is like written in a reasonable way that that means it's the answer, right? The um, essay college board is kind of mean, is trying to trick you, but don't worry, we're making, we're, you're gonna be smarter than it. All right, fantastic. So um, I'm only kind of flipping through quickly these examples because I feel like some people have done them. Um, another thing with like the main idea of texts is to, and I'm sure that you guys all know about this, but to look for the topic sentence or pay particularly close attention to the topic sentence, because often, and you know this in your own essay writing, right? Like you, you introduce the idea of the paragraph in the topic sentence, often like the end of a paragraph is also important. It will be like the kind of concluding statements or where like a hypothesis or whatever is found, right? So here, the main idea of the text is stated in the topic sentence, which is that this Navajo or Dine weaver, Lily Taylor, uses plants and vegetables from Arizona, where she lives. 
Um, another thing to keep in mind is, and I'm really, I am aware that I'm like running through these without giving you a chance to read them, but we're going to be doing plenty of practice. Um, and so these are just kind of general things to look for. So to use this for like as method or like methodology or like kind of um, example of technique as opposed to we, us needing to get the right answer to these example questions, right? Um, so we also need to, that like a thing that you have to have to remember, and I know that I've told you some of this, some of, I have told some of you this a lot, um, is that like a mention is an evidence. We want to always like imagine it like evidence is like more important evidence over mention. So just because like some words or phrases in the text show up in an answer choice, it doesn't mean that it's the correct answer. In fact, often it's, it's kind of a trap as well, right? Like we're it's mentioning it so that you'll be again be like oh i remember that and then think it's the answer when it's not so as you can see all of these incorrect answers for this text about this weaver um are using stuff that's directly in the text but the correct answer is using like kind of synonyms synonymous words which have the same meaning but expressed differently so here it says local resources which is you know just another way of saying plants and vegetables from Arizona or clay from nearby soil, right? So actually something often, like, or will often be like reworded the main idea instead of just like random snippets of um, text, of the information from the text. Another one that we were, another, um, any questions so far? I'll just pause there so that I'm not like giving you too much. <laughs> All right, perfect. Okay, so another kind of question that we often get here is like, what is the function of an underlying bit in the text as a whole? So in this case, we have this bit where it says his singularity impelled a closer scrutiny. And like, this is also actually just like a good example to like look at because as we can see here, like it's from a Melville story that's um from the 19th century. So the language is kind of difficult. I mean, even the underlying sentence, right? So when you approach these ones with like difficult um language, you don't want to get like lost in like the vivid description um, and you can like use like, uh, 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 you, know, you know, focus on the question and use context clues to help determine long words. And there's you don't always need to know like every the meaning of every word in it. Right. Like you can you're just like reading in a, a smart way for the answer. And so here um, you can pro uh, a process of elimination, just like we did with um, the uh, words and context answers today can be helpful. Um, okay, great. Another thing that we do, another kind rather of these um, pure reading comprehension questions across text comparisons um, with these ones. I mean, with all of them, it's like good to read the question first, but with these ones, it's like super, super important. Um, you don't want to, if you read two texts, just next to each other without like um having a method of like how you're reading them or what you're reading for it's really hard to separate them out in your mind like, there's only so much information that we can hold and especially when they're on the same subject it's really difficult to like keep them separate so with these ones if we can look if we look at the question here it says based on the text how would um Kerker, or whatever his name is and colleagues most likely describe the view of the theorist presented in text one so here, what we would do is firstly, obviously reading the question, what it's asking us is to like, asking us um, how text two would respond to the review of the theorist. So the first thing that we need to find is the view of the theorist. So you read text one being like, what is the view? And then read text through, through the lens of what that view is to see if they agree or disagree. This like saves time and just makes the whole thing way less confusing than trying to read two paragraphs to determine it, right? So here, like the theorists argue that um, historical diversity is a major driver of um, ecological, of how an of how diverse an ecological community eventually becomes. And then in text two, it says, actually, there was very little difference. So this means that we're really only having to focus carefully on small portions of the text instead of trying to keep in mind the whole thing. So these examples that we're doing here are gonna be from SAT two module one, we're gonna do some questions together as a group and then i'll give you guys um send a link in the chat and we can do some practice on your own but let's start doing it together all right so as we can see with this first one here it's a main purpose one so that's what we're looking for 
So the following text is from Georgia Douglas Johnson's 1922 poem, Benediction. Um, so which choice best states the main purpose of the text? So go forth, my son, winged by my heart's desire, great reaches yet unknown await for your possession. I may not, if I would, retrace the way with you. My pilgrimage is through, but life is calling you. So have a look at the answer choices. And again, like, look, we've got this thing we were talking about that um, they all start in a reasonable way, right? So we need to not fall for this like reasonable thing. So have a look at these answer choices and see what you think the answer is. And then, you know, raise your hand or put it in the chat or whatever. Perfect. Yeah. So here the answer is to encourage a child to embrace the experiences life will offer. Whereas at the beginning, it says, go forth, my son, are you a child? Um, and then life is calling you. So like, go and embrace these experiences. Fantastic. Does anyone have any questions about that before we move on to the next one? Great. Okay. So this is one of these function ones. Which choice best describes the function of the underlying sentence in the text as a whole? Um, all right. So the following text is adapted from Indian Boyhood, a 1902 memoir by Ohiyesa, a Santi Dakota writer. In the text, Ohiyesa recalls how the women in his tribe harvested maple syrup during his childhood. If you get, it's really important to always read the context. Like sometimes there'll be... Um, you know, sometimes it's just like but the the date and that can also be kind of helpful. But like sometimes there'll be um things which are like we you wouldn't necessarily like know what's going on without it. So like this this is not a waste of time to read. Like always make sure to be reading the context when it's given. All right. Now the women began to test the trees, moving leisurely among them, axe in hand, and striking a single quick blow to see if the sap would appear. The trees, like people, have their individual characters. Some were ready to yield up their lifeblood, while others were more reluctant. Now one of the birchen basins was set up under each tree, and a hardwood chip driven deep into the cut which the axe had made. From the corners of this chip, at first drop by drop, then more freely, the sap trickled into the little dishes. What do we think best describes the function of the underlying sentence as a whole? I got a couple of answers in. Would be great to see some more of you. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, here it's elaborating on an aspect. It elaborates on an aspect of the maple trees that the women evaluate. So in the first sentence, we have the women testing if the trees had sat by just giving a little quick with the axe. And then it's saying that like some were ready to like release sap, like you know, and others and others were like not yet. So it's like elaborating on this thing that they're doing to see the sap. Does that make sense to anyone? I think quite a lot of people um, uh, uh, also said B, but like we're not talking about the relationship between people and trees. It's just it's just like it's like a. Are kind of sim it's like it's comparing them it's saying that like you know some people are like oh are like willing to like you know open up and others aren't it's it's not that like it's not talking about the the humans are only being used as like a, a kind of tool for comparison it's not actually about the relationship between people and trees if that makes sense any questions on this one before we move on to the next one all right fantastic Okay, so here we have a cross-text comparison question. So the first thing that we do when we approach these, um, and also with all of them, it's good practice, but especially with these, is to immediately jump to the question to see what we need to be reading for, right? We can't hold all of that in our mind at once. So based on the text, how would text two respond to the conventional wisdom discussed in text one? So when we look, read text one, 
we need to find the conventional wisdom, right? So ecologists have long um, wondered how thousands of microscopic plankton species can live together near ocean surfaces competing for the same resources. According to the conventional wisdom, and here it's like conveniently underlined, one species should emerge after outcompeting the rest. So why do so many species remain? Ecologists' many efforts to explain the phenomenon still haven't uncovered a satisfactory explanation. So now we're going to see how the authors of text two would respond to this conventional wisdom that one species should emerge after out um, competing the rest. So um, ecologists Michael Berenfield and colleagues have connected phytoplankton's diversity to their microscopic size. Because these organisms are so tiny, they are spaced relatively far apart from each other in ocean water and, moreover, experience that water as a relatively dense substance. This, in turn, makes it harder for them to move around and interact with each other, with one another. Therefore, says Berenfeld's team, direct competition amongst photoplankton probably happens much less than previously thought. So what do we think the answer is here? How would text two respond to text one? Yeah, okay, fantastic. Yeah, so here is that the correct answer is that by arguing that it's based on a misconception about the species competing with one another, and this misconception is really like shown clearly here. Um, when it says that uh, the the direct competition happened less than previously thought. So this, the conventional wisdom is wrong. All right, fab. Any questions on that before we move on to the next one? All right, great. And then sometimes the questions are just like quite direct. Like why would a helicopter built on Earth be unable to fly on Mars? So let's have a look. Um, in 2014, Amelia Kuhn and her team at NASA set out to build a helicopter capable of flying on Mars. Because Mars's atmosphere is only 1% as dense as Earth's, the air of Mars would not provide enough resistance to the rotating blades of a standard helicopter for the aircraft to stay aloft. For five years, the team tested designs in a lab that mimicked Mars's conditions and um, they ultimately designed, uh, the craft the team ultimately designed can fly on Mars because its blades are longer and rotate faster. So why couldn't it um, be built on Mars? Okay, perfect. Anyone else? Yeah, great. Because of the different atmospheric conditions, right? Like in the text, it says, um, it's only 1% as dense as Earth's, the atmosphere is only 1% as dense as that on Earth, there's not enough resistance to the floating bay to stay aloft. Fab. I feel like this one's quite straightforward, but are there any questions on that? All right, fantastic. Okay. So in this question 12, we're looking for the main idea of the text. So in West Africa, Jalis have traditionally been keepers of information about family histories and records of important events. They've often served as teachers and advisors too. New technologies may have changed some aspects of the role today, but Jalis continue to be valued for knowing and protecting their people's stories. What choice best states the main idea? For those of you just arriving here, just pop your full name in the chat. Um, yeah, perfect. Yeah, con exactly right. Yeah, it's A. So even though there's been some changes, uh, new technologies may have changed some aspects. They continue to preserve the history. They, you know, here it's saying, this is like the kind of same idea, different words. Continue to be valued for knowing and protecting the people's stories, i.e. their history. All right, great. We'll do one more example together and then we can practice. I'll give you guys some practice to do on your own. All right, again, with this one, another main idea question. Um, so in 1934, the physicist Eugene Wigner um, 
posited that the, exi the existence of a crystal consisting entirely of electrons in a honeycomb-like structure, the so-called Winger crystal, remained largely conjecture, however, until um, Feng Wang and colleagues announced in 2021 that they had captured an image of one. The researchers trapped electrons between two semiconductors and then cooled the apparatus, causing the electrons to settle into a crystalline structure. By inserting an ultra-thin sheet of graphene above the crystal, the researchers obtained an impression, the first visual confirmation. So what here do we think the ide main idea of the text is? Yeah. Okay. Most most on most of these are correct. Here it's a it's about the main idea here is that it's like the most definitive evidence. So we're saying that there was this evidence um was just conjecture, like a, a idea until it was like um until that there was one that like showed one. Um and so it's the first and you know again like we often get um information the like key point can come at the end as well so the first visual confirmation so the main idea is that these researchers have got the the, mo the most visual de definitive evidence to date for the existence of it all right does anyone have any questions about any of this before you do your own practice i'm not quite sure i understand what um continuous Questions? Sorry, what, what do you mean by continuous? Oh, no, those sporting evidence questions, no, they don't exist anymore. They were only for the longer reading passages where there was that one that was like, yeah, it's all one question with one thing. Um, yeah, so that thing in the old SAT where it was like, please, what's the best evidence it doesn't exist anymore? All right, so... We're going to do, I'm going to give you a link to um, SAT2 and we're going to be, so like, tell me if you can't access this, but I've just put that in the chat and we're going to spend, I'm going to give you guys five-ish minutes, no, six minutes-ish, I don't know, to do questions six to nine on module two. Um, which starts on page um, 18. Does anyone have any questions or difficulties with that? Um, if whoever's like ready and could start just clicking, I don't know, put your thumbs up if you're when you're ready to start, if you can just use the thumbs up. Um, reaction. Or just put ready in the chat once you've accessed it and you're ready to be doing questions six to nine. Great, thank you. Got a couple people saying they're ready. All right, fantastic. I'll just wait for a few more. All right, great. Let's go ahead. I will obviously, no, I'm not going to disappear. So if you have any like questions or queries or it's not working, I don't want to like, you know, and while everyone else is doing it, just drop me a message and I'll try and help you over the chat. All right, so this is questions six to nine on module two of the paper that I just sent. It begins on page 18. All right, off you go, and we'll go over it in six minutes.
Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, question six, I was asking how everyone found it. And in question six, we're going for what, um, uh, what did everyone get for question six? And for those of you who've joined recently, if you can just pop your full name in the chat, we're going over some practice from SAT2 that we just did, but there'll be a chance, I think, with, there'll be time to do some more practice. Uh, yeah, perfect. It's making an extended um, comparison um, of night to a human being. We can see at the beginning, it says night wears a garment. Obviously, night can't actually. So this is a kind of personification of night. If you have like, you know, remember poetry terms from that kind of thing. All over her face, she draws a veil. In the black of her hair, um, the subtle hands of night move slowly. So throughout, it's this personification of night as a human being. All right, great. Any questions on that before we move on to number seven? All right, fantastic. What did everyone get for um, number seven? This is one of these uh, 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 function of the underlying portion of the text as a whole. Great. Yeah, so here it is that it elaborates um, about uh, on a claim about labor relations in a particular industry made earlier. So the claim that we're dealing with earlier is that increased production quotas conferred greater bargaining power on companies, employees, many of whom were Mexican-American women. Um, and then this is like an elaboration um, and the other thing to remember is like from grammar, which, you know, we did yesterday is that obviously we, when we and when we do grammar, we're interested in what comes before the colon, you know, an independent clause, but also what comes after can be is often an explanation, elaboration, or like obviously a list, but like the thing here that's saying is that this colon, like it is actually helps us um, uh, like helps show that it would be an elaboration, you know, like we can use the punctuation to help us like uh, navigate ourselves in the text. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any more questions before we move on to the next one? You're all doing super well. Thank you so much. All right. Great. Okay, number eight. Which choice, again, another one of these function ones, the function of the underlying sentence in the text as a whole. Here we've got the underlying sentence. What did everyone get? Yeah, perfect. So here, the correct answer is D. It suggests that he longs to experience a larger life outside the woods. So it's saying that he, so this little boy is like, who lives in, um, in, you know, woods, in a woods, like in the woods in Florida or like, um, he's, uh, throwing twigs in. I don't know. Did you ever play? I don't know if this is just British, but do you ever play that game? Where you play a game as a child. It's from Winnie the Pooh called Pooh Sticks, where you like throw uh, like on a little bridge over a stream, you like throw your twig on one side and then you run over to see whose twig, like wins but like so it's he's sort of like you know throwing little twigs into the water and like you know imagining where they end up um you know to jacksonville then the sea and then the wide world obviously he can't actually see them go out to the world but this is like his imagination and then crucially it says that he wanted to follow the twigs which is it like suggesting that he longs to experience the larger life outside the woods all right chelsea was that a question or was it all right, Bab. Okay, number nine. What did everyone get? Or does every does that make sense to everyone? I think most of you have got got um eight right. But what did everyone get for number nine? Yeah, perfect. So here, um, the answer is we are being asked what is true about Dorian. One of these like more um direct questions. Um, and that, so he is delighted by what he sees in the portrait. And the evidence in the text for that is that his cheeks flushed for a moment with pleasure. Joy came into his eyes. He was in wonder. Um, and the scene, sense of his own beauty came on him over him like a revelation. 
Why can't number seven be B? Uh, because the um, the reason why number seven can't be B is the um, uh, it doesn't like the the um, the residents of Johnstown are not. It doesn't have anything about them being confused in the underlying sentence. So we're only we have to look at like what the function of the underlying sentence is in the rest of it. So this is like evidence over mention, right? So um, it says perhaps he was puzzling, but here we're being given the sentence, which is like showing him. Oh, number seven, sorry. Um, because it's um, talking about a claim about labor. This is too um, general. The companies, and we're talking about the, you know, it's about the like um, um, employees. All right, perfect. Any questions on any of this before we do some more practice? Okay, great. I will. We're going to now do practice from SAT3. Um, I'm going to pop the link to the paper in the chat. So just keep in mind, this is a different paper from the one we just did it on. Um, so there's the paper. Open that up. And we're going to be doing module one, um, questions nine to 12. Just give everyone a second to get that up. And so that begins on page on page four of the paper I just gave you guys. So again, like before, um, well, and then for this, I think we'll take do another six minutes. Was that a good time way for everyone? Does anyone need long? I mean, that's like a little longer than you get in the real thing, but. Um, okay, perfect. Well, everyone, once you've got that ready, just like, um, right, like, you know, thumbs up or say okay in the chat or like, I don't know, something so I know that you're alive because obviously I can't see you. Fantastic. I appreciate it. You know, it's nice to get, it's always good to get responses so I don't feel like I'm teaching into a void, you know. Great. Thank you, everyone. There's my cat. Okay. Okay, perfect. Well, as as um with before, if anyone's having any issues accessing it or needs to ask me any questions, I'll be like available. But module one of this um paper of SAT three and it's questions nine to twelve. All right, good luck, everyone.
Fantastic. All right. Um, let's go over them. All right. So question nine. What did everyone get for nine? What's the main purpose here? Yeah, perfect. Great. Yeah, what we have here is the evidence that um, it's de depicting the setting, which is things like, you know, it was a bright, cool evening in June and Robin sang and the sun was going down. Um, while the characters await a visitor's arrival, the beautiful old house stood wide open for the long expected guests. Uh, Miss Pine sat by the window watching. It was almost time for the carriage, right? Great. Any questions on that before we move on to number 10? Perfect. All right. What did everyone get? Which choice best describes the function of the second sentence in the overall structure? Okay, a little bit more of a mixed bag here, but mostly. Yeah, so the structure is identifying the problem. In this case, that um, uh, they are much less confident about like when uh, this star will explode into a supernova, um, uh, which is then uh, where they can see that then like, which they then try to solve, um, but couldn't. So this is the kind of, um, it's identifying the problem and then the rest of the text is um, uh, as a solution that didn't happen. All right, great. Okay, number 11. What is true about Eleanor? Yeah, perfect. That she is remarkably mature for her age. As we can see in the text, it says that she was, her advice was so, I mean, I think for like eldest daughters are often remarkably mature for their age, but you know, the eldest daughter advice was so effectual. She possessed a strength of understanding, a coolness of judgment, which qualified her. And then this is key, I think, the own, though only 19. So that she's even the counselor of her mother, like, you know, giving her mum advice. Um, and, you know, no less knowledge that her mother still didn't know. All right, great. And then finally, for this question 12, what did everyone get for question 12? Yeah, perfect. So here the answer is D. Although in practical, we can be shown here that it's um, uh, it's more fanciful than functional. And the kitchen counter is chest high on one side and knee high on the other. It sounds, um, so although this design is, um, I mean, it has, what else does it have here? Like a uh, ceiling, the ceiling has a door to nowhere. It sounds quite stressful to me, but it seems actually um, it might improve the well-being. Um, after four years there, well, like one guy says, he what health benefits? All right, fantastic. Okay, so we've still got a little bit of time left. So let's go, oh, let's look at some questions from module two together of the same type. I feel like you're getting, you're all really getting the hand of these pure reading comprehension. Oh, why the other choices are wrong for number 10? Absolutely. So A doesn't work um, because it's not talking about, uh, how the work was uh, like received uh, by others. Um, it's not a central finding. It's saying that like they're less um, confident when it will happen. So that doesn't fit. It's like, there's not a finding, it's a problem. It's like, you know, the, um, and then um, it also just isn't, there's no mention. It's not dealing with the the method or its limitations. It's just, it's identifying a problem. Does that make sense? Great. All right, let's have a look at some of them from module two. All right. 
So here we have one. Which choice best describe best states the main purpose of the text? Um, so we have this uh, uh, poem called Cycle, which goes, There shall be new roads wending, a new beating of the drum. Men's eyes shall have fresh seeing. Grey lives reprise their span. But under the new sun's being, completing what night began, there'll be the same backs bending, the same sad feet shall drum, when this night finds its ending and day shall have to come. What do we think the main purpose of the text is here? Great, got a couple answers coming through. Anyone else have an idea what the main purpose is? All right, fab, yeah. Your, this is great. Yeah, the main purpose here is to consider the repetitiveness, the repetitiveness inherent in human life. Um, you know, this kind of cycle, which is like, you know, when this night finds its ending and day shall have to come, the kind of like um, inherent repetitiveness of the cycle of day and night. Um, can be both rewarding, a fresh seeing, um, you know, this like reprisal of lives um, and challenging, which is that like the same backs bending, the same sad feet shall drum. So like, you know, each, each like this repetitive cycle brings hope and also um, difficulties. All right, great. Does that, let's have a look at number six, unless anyone has any questions about that. All right, so in this one, important context here, the speaker is considering staging a play at home with a group of his friends and family. So he says, we mean nothing but a little amusement among ourselves just to vary the scene and exercise our powers in something new. We want no audience, no publicity. We may be trusted, I think, in choosing some play most perfectly unexceptionable. Um, and I can conceive no greater harm or danger to any of us in conversing in the elegant written language of some respectable author than in chattering in words of our own. What do we think the main purpose of the text is here? Great. Anyone else? Okay, perfect. So um, it's the, it, the answer here is A, it's offering the assurance that the play will be inoffensive. Um, and the evidence for that is like, it's uh, perfectly unexceptionable. I, you can't take exception to it. Um, and it's the elegant written language of a respectable author. And also that it will be only a small number of people um, you know, a little amusement among ourselves, a group of family and friends, and that they want no audience and no publicity. And so I think this was the thing that someone said, I think one of you maybe said that, or like a couple of you said that it was D, but that um, it's not about them successfully promoting it. They're actually saying that there'll be no publicity. All right, everyone feeling up for another one? Just before the end of the time. All right, let's do one more. Okay, so this let this is an overall structure one. So musician Joni Mitchell, who is also a painter, uses images she creates for her album covers to emphasize ideas expressed in her music. For the cover of her album Turbulent Indigo, Mitchell painted a striking self-portrait that closely resembles Vincent van Gogh's self-portrait with a bandaged ear. Um, the image calls attention to the album's title song in which Mitchell sings about the legacy of the post-impressionist post painter. In that song, Mitchell also hints that she feels a strong artistic connection to Van Gogh, an idea reinforced by her imagery on the cover. What do we think the main, the overall structure is here? I 
okay a mixed bunch of answers anyone else want to put their yeah so we keep in mind with the structure is that we have to think about like how, what happens like in through the text in a linear fashion right so if we look at the first sentence here um it, you know it says that me, Jenny Mitchell is a musician and painter. also by the way guys Jenny Mitchell is amazing like she's so good anyway um but she uses images from her album to emphasize ideas expressed in the music um and then it gives like uh uh an example right that it says so it's talking about it, that she does this for her album covers generally and then it gives a specific example from uh turbulent indigo right so what we want here is that it presents the claim i.e that she um uses images for her album covers to express the ideas and then gives an example i think quite a lot of you were saying d um but it doesn't describe the the, the claim about Joni mitchell comes first it's not that it's describing the songs and then how they relate to the album's cover it's saying that Joni mitchell does this and then it's using the example of that album to um, support the claim that's made in a topic sentence. All right. Well, it's six o'clock. Um, so I will, um, you know, you're all very welcome to go. Thank you so much for coming. If you haven't put your name in the chat, um, please do so now. I will, um, I can stick around for like five, 10 minutes if anyone has any questions they want to ask. Otherwise, like, please do come tomorrow at 12 for claim data and conclusion um review and uh practice uh number six from this paper but yes i can bye um but yeah i uh that like because those questions can be a little trickier than these ones um thank you everyone eliana did you mean this one six from this paper we just did yeah okay perfect what um is there anything in particular that didn't make sense i mean feel free to just as, as you know it's a teeny group now if you want to speak or um otherwise just type it in the chat you thought it was d okay perfect okay so the issue here with d is that um so it says like in the in the text it says that they want no audience or publicity and d says that he believes the group will be able to successfully promote it and for something to be promoted it suggests publicity and like it suggests publicity like you know you're promoting something you're wanting publicity or like an or a bigger audience whereas this is saying that they want it is you know it's very small they don't want that does that make sense what does it mean by um inoffensive like as in it won't be like it won't offend anyone um it means it, it's like it's like you can't take exception to the right like you know that it's not like a uh 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 you know but it, like i'm assuming like it's not like uh a raunchy or like controversial play um it's saying that like it's un you, unexceptionable like you can't take exception to it um, and it's written by a respectable writer. So it's like, you know, not, it's not full of controversial material or anything inappropriate. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, imagine, imagine like, um, um, like a kid being like, mom, please, like, I promise it's not like, you know, I like, can I please watch this movie? It's not, I'm not going to like, um, you know, see something I shouldn't, you know, like this kind of thing. It's like someone like begging to be able to put on a play that there's like not going to be offensive. All right. Any other questions? Anything else anyone would like to go over? Okay. Well, if no one has any other questions, um, you know, you can always drop me an email or like um ask tomorrow if something comes up. But like, thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh hopefully see you tomorrow for the um claim data and conclusion stuff. All right, have a great evening, everyone.